All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Jazz Piano School podcast, episode number 70. I cannot believe we are at episode 70. That's incredible. I'm your host, Brendan Lowe, and thank you so much for joining me and taking the time out of your day to listen to this podcast. Now, this is going to be a very special podcast, and I have some very, very exciting news, and I've been dropping hints about this for a while now, and that is going to be the Jazz Piano School release of the Solo Piano System. And this is going to be our first specialty course that we are releasing this year. We're going to release four specialty courses. This is going to be one of four. So I'm very, very excited. Obviously, we have the main course, and that is just filled with information at jazzpianoschool.com. Basically, that was created to uh, lead and guide someone in a step-by-step manner from taking someone who knows nothing about jazz piano all the way up to a point where they can actually play gigs. They are very, you know, fluent with the jazz language, um, learning basically everything, right, from just just very, very beginning dominant seventh chords, major seventh chords, just basics, to all the way up to uh, pentatonic patterns, hexatonic patterns, uh, working through Coltrane changes, you know, so it's very, and everything in between, right? Now, we released the advanced course last year, and that was about uh, May, I believe, of last year, maybe a little bit earlier, February, I think. And now this year, we're going to be focusing on specialty courses because obviously in one course, we can't really uh, get all the details in for you know, all the education for one topic, right? So the main course is really designed for someone who knows nothing about jazz or you know, has has played around with jazz and basically just wants to grow overall as a player, right? They want to grow in everything, comping, intros, outros, uh, ballads, all different styles, improv, right? Especially improv. It focuses on improv a lot. Uh, Learning tunes. I mean, just everything you can possibly think of. Now, not everyone needs or wants all of that information. So what we're going to be focusing on now is specialty courses. And the first specialty course we're releasing, like I've said, is the solo piano system. Now, why did I choose to do that? Well, because of this reason. Over the past 10 years, right, the last decade, I've been teaching students. There's thousands of students. I've, ha- I've taught forever, right? Now, every student, and this includes myself, because every student who asked me this, I, re- I could relate. Uh, you know, 100% to every time they asked me this. And what they asked me and struggled with the most, right? One question I got all the time was, Brendan, when I'm playing through a tune, how do I arrange my hands so that I get a good sound, you know, playing jazz piano? And every time they asked that question, you know, I just felt for them because that's exactly what I wanted as well, growing up and learning jazz piano. And when I would go, most of us, right, probably you listening right now, you go to your piano and you're sitting and you're playing by yourself. I mean, a lot of people, we don't have the luxury of being able to play in groups all the time. Maybe that's not even what you want, right? You may not even want to play in groups. You just want the satisfaction of being able to sit down, whether it's your piano or anyone's piano, right? We have this dream of being able to sit at a piano, just walk up to a piano, sit down and play, right? And create lush, rich, beautiful sounding jazz standards and express ourselves through those standards. We have that dream. And so uh, when I would play, you know, growing up, I would play and I'd listen to myself and I'd be like, <laughs> this this is not right, right? Some, something here is not right. It just doesn't sound good. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know how to fix it. And I want to, you know, learn how to get the sound that I hear on the albums, right? Because I was listening to Oscar Peterson, Bill Evans, Errol Garner, you know, Red Garland, uh, all these, you know, monster pianists. Um, And I would want to get their solo piano sound. I mean, Bill Evans, just master of solo piano, uh, you know, would just sound like a full orchestra playing the piano by himself. It sounded like he had four hands, right? Uh, Same with Art Tatum and things like that. I mean, these guys obviously are on a whole different level, right? Uh, And stylistically, they have their very own styles. But just in general, you know, we all have wanted to achieve that that lush, beautiful sound when we're, when we go sit down to the piano. And I felt, I was so frustrated. All my students that have come to me over the past, you know, 10 years have been very frustrated and they just need, they want to know how to do it. Like, how do you arrange your hands? Like when you have a melody, you have chords, you know, what do you do? It's just like, I, I'm, I can relate so, so much because this is exactly what went through my head 
uh, when playing standards and trying to make my just myself right. I had to account for everything, uh, you know, all the temp, the tempos, the time, you know, the harmonies, the melody. Now you'd think solo piano, uh, you know, might be easier because it's just one person. You're only responsible to play, right? But actually, playing in a group. You know, it's much easier. You 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 might not even have to play the melody. You know, you could have a sax player playing the melody. You might just have to comp. The bass player and drummer are uh, playing with you. You know, keeping time, holding down the bass notes, and all you have to do is comp. So actually, group playing can be a much easier. Solo piano is like a beast, right? It's it's its own beast that we have to tackle. And so, I thought the perfect way into release specialty, the first specialty course to the world, to uh, the thousands of people that, uh, you know, have gone through JPS and are currently in JPS uh, would be to release the the solo piano system, the specialty course. And what I've done is literally create a course that I use every day in my gigs, you know, uh, my concerts, uh, recitals. I mean, playing, uh, you know, at all the venues that I've played at, um, a solo piano and it's exactly what I use and you hear other people using as well to get this rich, lush solo piano sound. And I've created a system and it's phenomenal. I mean, I, I, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I really believe that there's nothing out there like this. Now, there may be th- couple of close resources because I've been talking about this and researching it um, with some of the students in jazz piano school and there are some books that that come close right but again they're books now this is a whole thing on its own because this is within uh, you know we have the technology of a computer now and so sound slice is integrated with the course which means we get the scrolling notation we get the practice looping of the exercises we get all the written uh, the practice exercises, the lesson text, the workbook exercises, all digital. I mean, with the help of technology, just having this course available with all that technology, just, you know, it, it completely trumps just reading out of a book, right? And so it, it's just phenomenal. And so we are releasing that January 23rd. Now, this podcast, obviously, is going to be a promotional podcast for that. And what I'm going to be doing uh, in this episode And next week's episode is that I am going to be going over in this episode a one lesson from the uh, entire course. And this is one of the things that, again, most people, what I just explained, have trouble with. And that's how do you arrange your hands when you're accounting for the melody in a chord? Like there's so many different options to play voicings, to get the melody in, to get the bass notes in, to get your chords in, right? There's just so many different options. How do you even tackle that? How do you start tackling that so that you can approach it every time? And like a lot of us, we've we've copied or we've read transcriptions. And for like a B-flat 7 chord or an F minor 7 chord, you know, we only know how to play that one way. So when there's when we're thrown curveballs, you know, in standards, sometimes we just have no idea what to do. Now, The great thing about this episode is it's going to allow you to arrange the melody note with your chord in a beautiful arrangement every single time. Okay? Listen closely. This is is very exciting to me. It should be exciting to you because any, any melody note in any chord in the standard, right, in the entire standard, it's going to allow you to arrange complete standards all the way through uh, with perfectly arranged voicings spreads between both of your hands for solo piano that's what it's going to allow you to do and that's just one lesson in the solo piano system i mean obviously there's situational cases i'm not going to be able to go over in this entire episode but you're going to learn so much from this and we have a flow chart okay there's going to be seven steps and the flow chart is available to download completely free now uh, you can go to excuse me, jazzpianoschool.com forward slash solo piano system. This is going to be our release page. Uh, And you can download the flow chart there. You'll also see a countdown timer, right? So by downloading the flow chart, you're actually going to be in a special group uh, that will receive the flow chart, obviously, of the podcast that I'm doing today. But at the same time, you're going to receive more information, uh, you know, about the solo piano system as well. So it's kind of like a, a twofer, right? So you'll get the flow chart. It's a really nice graphically uh, created. We had our designer create this flow chart for the seven steps in the arranging process. You'll get that completely free. Uh, and at the same time, you'll get um, more information about the solo piano system. So again, jazzpianoschool.com forward slash 
solo piano system, jazzpianoschool.com forward slash solo piano system. So let me get right into it. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a melody from I Fall in Love Too Easily. Now, the arranging system can be used over all different tempos, but there's variations to that, right? And there's exceptions and situations. Now, all those exceptions, situational basis, well, what if this and what if that and what if you do this? Those are all explained in the system, okay? Those are all explained in the solo piano system. I go over everything. You know, what if the note's a shell note? What if the note's a melody note? What if the note's extension? What if your bass note's here? What if your bass note's there? You know, what if what if I, I want to add this extension? What if I want to switch hands? All of those questions are answered in the solo piano system. But today, I'm going to be using one melody note from I Fall in Love Too Easily. Now, on the second measure... We have a B flat, okay, uh, over a B flat seven chord. So the melody note is B flat, and the chord is B flat seven. Okay. Now what I'm going to do again is I'm going to show you the seven step arranging process. If I, if we you were playing this tune, you can use this process over every single portion of the melody, right? And again, there's more information like when to use this over the melody. Sometimes the melody is moving fast, so you're not going to have time. But I'm going to give you, lay it out right now for you. So the first step, okay, in the arranging process is obviously we want to look at the melody note. Okay, this is going to sound very simple, but the uh, everyone watching on YouTube, right, can see this. If you're listening to the podcast, you can kind of just picture it. I'm playing the B flat above middle C. Now we want to look at the melody note and and think to ourselves, just kind of just kind of you know realize where that melody note is on the piano because melody notes can be lots of different places and that's going to change the texture and the arrangement of what we're able to do now i'm playing a melody note here okay and let's say my melody note was c middle c i have less room to harmonize down here because we're getting into the muddy end of the piano right if i play a c major chord here and i play a b flat major chord here that's two completely different sounds even though I'm playing the exact same arrangement, right? I have one, five, one, three, five, one. <clears throat> B flat major and C major. Now, if my melody note's G and I play a G major chord of the same arrangement, that's super low and, and pretty muddy. So we're going to need to change things, obviously, depending upon where the melody note is, uh, you know, written. Okay, so in this case, the melody note's here. So step one is all I want you to do is locate the melody and just realize where it is all right now step two is we want to uh, look at the bass note okay and realize that we have a couple of bass note options now when playing solo piano we need the melody we want our bass notes because the bass notes are going to hold up the low end of the piano and we want our shells the shells are going to be the third and seventh of any chord Okay, and they, they uh, basically portray the harmony of a chord. So the third and seven are very, very important notes in a chord. And so that fundamentally, foundationally, that's what we want in every arrangement of, uh, of the melody. On, any, on every measure, on um, you know, any time you want to do some sort of arrangement or, or to portray the harmony. So we're looking for the melody, bass note, and shells. Now step two, we want to locate our bass note options, right? And <clears throat> basically just look at uh, the bass note options. So to pick a bass note, all we have to do is, is simply, you know, look at the bass note options we have. So we have the B flat here, we have B flat here, we have a B flat here, and we have a B flat down all the way in the end that's off the camera. So those are our four bass notes. Now again, if you're thinking, well, that's not a bass note up here. It can be a bass note technically. When I use the term bass note, all I'm saying is that it's going to hold the low end of your arrangement. So that's going to be on the bottom end of your arrangement. So if I chose this bass note up here, then I'd want my shells in the middle. Now this isn't going to be a very good choice for a bass note, obviously, because we only have an octave to work with, right? Now if I choose bass note number two right here, now we have some more space in between uh, the the two notes, the melody and the bass note, right? Okay. And if I choose bass note down here, we have more room. And then bass note down here, we have more room. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose for the demonstration today, I'm going to choose this bass note right here. So I'm playing the bass note below middle C, excuse me, well, an octave below middle C. And then I have my melody 
up here uh, above metal C as well. So I have about I have two even octaves uh, that I am going to place my two hand arrangement between. Okay, two even octaves that I have to work with. So the melody is always going to be on top. Your bass notes always going to be on the bottom. All right. Are there exceptions? Yes. Okay, but I'm not going to be going over those. So here we go. So now I have that's step two. Step three, in uh, like I just said, in solo piano arrangement, we want we need to have the shells. Okay, the third and seven. Now there's a couple ways we can do this, right? And I call these our left hand solo piano components. Now our our left hand solo piano components are meant to add our shells to the equation. And there's a lot of, again, there's seven different ways I explain the left-hand solo piano components. There's seven different left-hand solo piano components. But all you need to know now for this podcast is that the left-hand solo piano components are meant to add our shells into the equation. Okay, that's all they're meant to do. So what we want to do is pick a left-hand solo piano component. Okay? Sorry, I'm, I'm fiddling. Uh, <laughs> my bad. I had something caught in my throat there. So we want to pick a left-hand solo piano component. So I have two octaves uh, that I'm going to work with, and I want to add the shell. So without going into all the left-hand solo piano components, I'm going to pick one and seven in my left hand. That's one of the seven left-hand solo piano components. Now, that's step three. I've picked my left-hand solo piano component. Now what I want to do, step four, okay, is I want to add any uh, shell that's not uh, there, okay? So I only have one and seven now. All I have to do is add the third. And what I'm gonna do to do that is add that with my right hand, okay? So you see that? So I have one and seven, three in the melody. So my left hand solo piano component I chose to fill our gap of, an, of two octaves with my one and seven. Now, step four, I need to add the shell that is going to finish the equation. Now we have basically all the foundational blocks. We have one, we have seven, we have three, and we have the melody, okay? So when playing my arrangement, if I play this, I could, I could basically move on, right? I've got everything I need. I don't, I don't need to really change that. Obviously, we can add more to it, but, but those are the fundamentals. In a lot of situations, I'll just do that uh, because in this lower end down here, you hear how great that sounds? All I'm playing, let's say your melody note was uh, A flat, or let's say it was a C, right? I'd play the C, one and seven, and the third. That's a really nice arrangement right there, and all I have is the <coughs> foundational components. I have one, seven, three, and five. Now, see, that sounds great in the lower end, but up here in the higher end, since things are cutting through a little bit more, we're gonna wanna add uh, you know, a couple more things, okay? So step one, we locate the melody. Step two, uh, we want to locate our bass note and choose a bass note option. Step three, we're going to choose a left-hand solo piano component. Okay. Now step four, again, we're going to add our shells. All right. And I just added the the, uh, the third. Okay. Step five, we're going to add right-hand harmonizations. Now, right-hand harmonizations can be chord tones. Okay. Now. Specifically, uh, one and five because we do not have those. All right. Now, sometimes, right, occasionally, you can add the five in. I could add the five in here, or I could add the root in. If I if I switch my fingers here, I can add the root in down here. Now, this doesn't sound great, right? And typically, we don't want to overdo the chord tones. Now, I, again, I go into more of the situational basis in the solo piano system. But again, for now, I'm gonna add my five, right? So this kind of gives us our dominant seven sound and our our root, or excuse me, our melody on top. We've just added the five, we've added one. So again, we could double the seven if we want. And we could double the uh, root if we want. So again, step five, the right hand harmonization is adding chord tones. And again, this fills this creates a thicker texture. Now again, if I give you a different example, like in a different register, down here, adding the five again or adding the root is a very, very nice texture. It doesn't sound bland, right? Up here, when I just add the root in, 
it sounds very beginnerish. Okay, and those are the, those minute details again are the things you need to watch out for and, and are in the course because that's what makes your playing sound, you know, like there's something missing. This is what I couldn't figure out for years. I'd play something like this, I'd be like, well, that sounds like crap, you know. <laughs> but then you do the same thing down here. That sounds very beautiful. That sounds great. And all I'm doing, again, I, I'm still playing, you know, essentially the same thing. Anyway, so we're adding chord tones in step five, okay? So all I'm going to do, actually, is just add the fifth, though. I'm not going to double any more chord tones. And, and I'd say as a general rule of thumb, when adding right-hand harmonizations, you want to stick to it maybe adding one. Like maybe you just add the fifth or the root, okay? And always lean towards adding the fifth or the root first because we already have the third and seven, and those are chord tones. We already have those in the voicing, so we don't necessarily need those again. But we don't have the root or the fifth. In this case, we do have the root, obviously, on the bottom, but we don't have the root in the chord. We don't necessarily need the root either. Uh, but again, it's just an extra texture to thicken up or fill the space, okay? So in this case, I'm going to add the fifth. So now we have one, seven, three, five melody on top. Okay, that was step five we just completed. Now, this is starting to get a little fun because we can start to add harmonizations, right? In step five. Step six, we can now add extensions, right? And now extensions is where the colors come out. Now, everything we've done up to this point has built a foundation to hold the extensions. They hold the essence of the extension. The extensions are the colors, right? The the color tones that are going to ring out and really catch the ear. Okay? So what I'm going to do, again, I have my my chord here, is that I get to choose any of the extensions that I want for a dominant seven chord. Now again, in the course, you practice all your extensions. You practice all that you learn all the extensions for your dominant chord. You practice all the extensions for all your chords. And then this allows you to know what extensions you have available to choose, all right? So traditionally for a dominant uh, seven chord, we have the flat nine, we have the natural nine, we have the sharp nine, okay? We have the sharp 11, we have the natural 13, and we have the flat 13, all right? So lots of extensions for a dominant chord. So what I'm gonna do here, here's our voicing, one, seven, three, five, one. I'm gonna play around now with extensions. And this is just testing. This is just having fun expressing myself in, in using my ear to determine what I like. So I'm gonna start with the flat nine. So I'm gonna place the flat nine. I know my flat nine is a B natural. So again, we're not gonna place the B natural up here above the melody. We're not gonna place it down here, okay? The flat nine is gonna fit in, or all extensions usually will fit in between your left hand and your right hand, what you've done so far. So here's my opportunity right here, if you're watching on the camera, with my thumb to place my flat nine. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. So we go from this to this. Now, all right, I just got to do that one more time. Listen to this. This to this. To this. Excuse me, here's the first one. To this. Now, I placed... <laughs> this is just... I don't know. This just gets me going. I placed one note. One note. Just one extension in there. And it completely changes the chord to the sound. I mean, do you realize the power of that? Like, can you hear that? So we have this, right? And then I place one extension here, the flat nine. And we go to basically the richest, like just a beautiful, beautiful chord. My ear is telling me to go down to the A flat on top. <laughs> so... Again, you know what's so amazing about this, again, this system is that there's a couple, there's there's so many things at work here that the earlier components are so, so simple, but yet at the same time, everyone learning jazz piano, including myself and possibly, probably you as well, 99% of you, you know, we don't know these steps to take initially to build a foundation that can um, either that can uphold an extension like that or, or, or allows us to completely change our playing with one note. I mean, if I were to voice this differently, right, with the melody here 
And then let's say, let me see if I can think of a good example right now. Let's say I were to play, um, you know, I'm going to place the, I'm going to play my, you know, I, what if I played this? I'm playing the shells. I have the flat nine here and I have the melody note. Uh, you know, I could play this, but it's, it doesn't sound the same, right? It doesn't sound anywhere close to the same thing. It's not, it's not the greatest example, but you get the picture. So you could be voicing things differently, right? And add the, the extensions in, but because of those earlier simple steps that build that foundation and the structure to the voicing, to the chord, that's what's going to instantly change the sound of your playing. And I mean, this demonstration right here, I hate to sound, uh, you know, kind of, uh, plug pitchy guys but again this demonstration right here going from this I mean I'm playing a B flat 7 dominant chord right one seven three five one and I add one extension in the middle because that's what the system tells us to do and that's the good place to pl to place it and it completely changes the sound of the chord right now again is as I begin to I can move this down it gets even richer, actually. I mean, it's a great chord in B flat over the B flat seven, but over like a A flat seven, the same voicing, that sounds fantastic. Over a G seven flat nine, Ooh. you know. And again, if we if we put some embellishment on this, right? If I play a lower bass note, jump up to the chord, and then I can arpeggiate. You know, stuff like that starts to bring everything together. All right, so sorry, I'm just, I'm so excited about this because it's, I wish I had this. I wish I had this when I was growing up because it, it, it honestly would have cut 10 years off my, my learning curve, you know? All right, so anyway, there's more to go. There's more to go. <laughs> so we added the flat nine, okay? Now, here is the, there's our chord. So, so again, starting from the F minor 7, there's the chord we've created, okay? And that's in context of I Fall in Love Too Easily. Okay, so what I want to do now, again, this isn't our only option. So, no, so I, sorry, I should finish the steps. So that's step number six. We're going to add our extensions. Now, step number seven is to make sure we have a well-balanced spread between both hands. Now, if I jump my right hand up an octave, technically, I would still be uh, completing the steps, right? No melody note is going to be this high, first of all, so you're never going to experience this, but sometimes you may experience very high melody notes, maybe like this F up here in the piano. Right, and if this F was the melody note with the B flat seven here, I could technically get away with doing this, but we have a huge gap here in the middle of the piano where nothing's being um, played. So the balance between my left hand and my right hand isn't—it's not very well balanced uh, because we have a huge gap here. It's like our left hand, huge gap of uh, more or more than an octave, and then our right hand. All right. So again, uh, what we want to do on step seven is just make sure we have a well-balanced spread. And you're going to see that with your hands. Your hands should be fairly close together with your arrangement. I mean, everything, if you guys are listening to the podcast, you're not going to be able to see this. I'm moving my hands on the camera. But everything should be fairly close. Your both hands should be fairly close together when playing these arrangements. All right? So that is the system. That's all seven steps. I mean, that's it. That's it. I mean, this is, it's life changing. I, I, I got to be completely honest here. And you can get that flow chart. I mean, there's, again, there's lots of situational things. I chose this demonstration to demonstrate the melody of the root on top. Now, what if the melody is an extension? What if the melody is up high? What if you choose a different bass note? Obviously, there's six more left hand solo piano components we can choose. There, it goes deep, deep, deep into this, which actually, you know, which obviously makes you just that much more of a better player. But you guys can take this and start to use this now now uh, to just completely reform your playing, right? Completely revamp it, change it, and start to think about this strategy when you're playing through tunes. Now, I'm going to back up just a little bit. We've gone through all seven steps. 
excuse me, and again, that is the flow chart. So to get the all the seven steps and a nice graphic, I mean, you can post this on your wall, you can thumbtack it to your wall above your piano or whatnot, and just follow these steps every time you go through a standard. Go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash solo piano system. Again, you're going to see the release date of the solo piano system, and uh, there will be a button there in which we'll email you the flow chart. Okay. Now, if I back up, I'm going to take this a couple steps further just to show you the power of this. Uh, so if we go through this again, right? So I'm going to have my melody. I have my bass note. I'm choosing my seven here. I'm going to put my third in. Now, again, we have everything we need here. So we have the root. We have the seven. We have the third. So we got our shells here. We have the root on the bottom, shells, and melody. I don't have to add the seven in. Uh, excuse me, the five, right? I chose to add the fifth in. I mean, on this step, after we've added the shells in, we can choose to add fillers, you know, and that those fillers are going to be chord tones. And again, like I said, you want to lean towards, if you want to fill in more, you can add the fifth or the root. Okay, again, those are chord tones. So those are pretty much already being played except for the fifth. Everything will be already being played except for the fifth. And again, you might even have the fifth in your left hand uh, for some of the other left hand solo piano components I haven't gone over. But let's say I just want to use this and I want to add all extensions. I want to add all colors, right, to my chord because it can get wild, okay? Wild and crazy. <laughs> wild and crazy jazz piano. <laughs> so here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, test a couple out here. So again, I'm going to use a natural 9 this time, and I'm going to use a flat 13. Okay, so here's my chord now. That sounds great. I love that. I love that. It's a different quality. Uh, it serves a different purpose. Right here's the new one. So we have one, seven, nine, three, flat 13, and melody. I like it. I like it. So here's in context. Now, I, I, that, that would probably sound better if I actually play softer that way because it's a very delicate chord. You got some delicate intervals there. Here we go. Let me try again. kind of didn't pedal right almost you could do it like that do a little cutoff too so anyway that's a that's a nice one Let, let's keep experimenting though so again this is how the system it teaches you to expand upon your options you're not caged in right i talked about being caged in a lot of the things most jazz students do and i did is that i caged myself through the learning process because we're just copying we're copying transcriptions we're copying our teacher we're just we're just playing arrangements of what other people play it doesn't necessarily allow for freedom it doesn't allow, allow us to use our own creativity and expression this system does because we back up a couple steps to our foundation root seven three melody now we're free to express and add our extensions however we want Right, and different melody notes and different bass notes are going to give us different options and different arrangements, and it's all going to be you picking. That's the greatest part. You are in charge. You're the one now self-expressing and creating. Okay, so I'm going to pick. Uh, let me see. I'm going to pick the flat nine again, and I'm going to choose natural thirteen now. Ooh, I love this sound. The flat nine combined with your natural thirteen is amazing. I absolutely love it. So here's the chord. We have one seven flat nine three thirteen one. Oh, I love it. It's so nice. I do that little roll. It just kind of adds some flair to it, right? Okay, there's our resolution. So in context, here we go. There it is again. And again, this register has a certain quality. I mean, every single key has a certain quality to it, right? Now, if I draw, again, this is kind of a higher register. It still works, though. It still definitely still works. As we get higher, uh, you know, you have to change a couple things. But, uh, again, as we get lower, if we took this to G, let's say, 1, 7, flat 9, 3, 13, root. That is just a beautiful, rich, lush register for G, too. Okay, even F sharp. I love F sharp playing that there. I mean, that's so beautiful. But again, B flat seven works. I love that too. That's a great chord. So there's so many options, right? Let's do one more. Okay. By the, by this time you're getting the, uh, you're getting the feel for this now again, right? 
Like if I were to do this on the first chord of the tune, right? What I've been playing is this. Again, there's more, there's more, I, I'm kind of harmonizing the same way. And I'm gonna go, you can go through the system harmonizing. You need the other left hand solo piano components. Those are, those go in depth. And because like if I pick a spread like this, one and seven necessarily isn't my best option here because I'm adding three. And then I do have a little bit of a gap, right? But there's other ways to kind of fill the spread better. So you remember step seven, we wanna have a nice balance between our hands, okay? In other ways, I might play a 10th. This gives me a nice spread, right? I could add the nine in there. I could add the uh, 11, you know, different things like that. But anyway, back to our B flat seven chord. Let's try one more. So I'm gonna have the third, I'm gonna, let's do the uh, flat nine again and we'll do a uh, flat 13 this time. Uh, no, I'm sorry, let's do uh, sharp 11, okay? So we'll have flat nine, three, sharp 11, melody. I love this as well. <laughs> Ooh, love it, love it. Beautiful, beautiful. Oops, sorry. So it's, it, I, this, I just can't talk about this enough. So basically, again, what the system is going to teach you, this is just one lesson from the system. And this lesson is, is by far one of the biggest lessons there is. I mean, there's so much more to this lesson that I go over that builds up when you get the other components that fit into this arranging process. I mean, oh, it sky's the limit. I mean, you just have endless amounts of freedom to play a solo piano and arrange exactly how you want and you know you didn't have to take you didn't have to go through years and years of suffering trying to guess how to arrange your hands I mean this will do it every time and no matter what type of voicing you're trying to go for whether it's a compact voicing whether it's a spread voicing when you look at where the melody is and based on where you choose your bass note that's going to give you a sp specific texture if you choose a bass note that's close to your melody you're going to get a compact voicing if you continue to follow the system if you choose a bass note that's lower on the piano with your melody right if you have more space you're going to get a spread voicing and you're going to have different options to choose from but the the thing about this the great thing about this is is it's a it's a choose your own adventure. I mean, you're in control. You're not copying. You're creating. I got to say that again. I love that. You're not copying. You're creating. You're the one creating all of this, right? So uh, you know those books where you could flip to a page and then you could either choose to go here or here based on the story that you're in. This is the same with the solo piano system. Based on where the melody note is and your bass note is, you're going to choose the left-hand solo piano component you want and that fits with the space. Then you start to add the fills uh, you know, you want based on the space and based on what extensions are available to the chord that you like. It's all based of what you like and you're not guessing. And, you know, when using this system, you're not going to be frustrated. You're not going to be, uh, you know, overwhelmed. You're simply putting the pieces together as they fall into place. And you're going to make, you're never going to make an ugly sound out of this. I can guarantee, I can guarantee you. You know, the thing is, I've just come up with a process to get to that point that we're all striving for. And I, again, I wish I had this myself. But anyway, that is the podcast lesson. Again, so we have the melody, locate the melody. Okay, f you know, just pay, be conscious of where it is on the piano. Look at your bass notes you have available. If it's a B flat seven chord, then obviously we have these four B flats. It, let's say it was an F chord. We'd have, we can't use this F, obviously. There's not enough space, but we'd have this F, this F, and this F, right? So you want to see all your bass note options. Pick one. Pick a bass note option, okay? Then you want to uh, choose your left-hand solo piano component. Now, again, that's a big part of uh, the solo piano process, right? Choosing a left-hand solo piano, piano component. Now, again, you don't need to, there, you can use one and seven. That's what I did. But all you really uh, want is to add the shells. So you want to get those shells in there, okay? When, when uh, after you've picked your bass note and after you have the melody, all you need to do is get the shells in there. So figure out what the shells are. Put your shells into the equation, okay? Whether it be with your left hand or your right hand or both, right? And then if, let's say, you use one shell with your left hand, then you, obviously you need to add the other shell with your right hand, okay? Don't use both shells, uh, you know, like a root position chord. See, this is how you start to sound more like beginnerish, 
right? You want to spread your shells out. So if your left hand takes one and seven, then your right hand takes three. If your left hand takes one and three, then your right hand will take seven and then spread the chords out. Now this, I know we still are playing one, three, seven, but it's what, the, it's what happens after this as you start to fill with the right hand uh, steps that are listed that's going to change the sound of this structure that you're used to being a beginning sound, right? When you play this and just the melody with, with bad um, fills up here, this isn't going to sound good. When you play this with good fills up here based on the system, it's going to sound good, all right? So there's a lot of minute details actually that you probably won't even be aware of in the system that are making your playing sound better. I mean, that's, that's another great part of it. So anyway, next week I'm going to be going over uh, a lot of a lot of more general things about solo piano, keeping time, right, tempo, stylistic things, and excuse me, a lot of fine-tuned details that uh, happen when playing solo piano that you need to need to be aware of. Otherwise, again, your playing is going to sound beginner. So, thank you so much for joining me. Again, you can go get the uh, flow chart at jazzpianoschool.com forward slash uh, solo piano system. And again, anyone who goes and gets that, it's also a, a, a informational a sign up. So you'll get more information on the solo piano system release, right? What is it going to entail? All the lesson steps, what everything I do, a look inside, how much it's going to cost, you know, what the details are, blah, 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 stuff like that. You'll get information when you sign up for that flow chart as well. So you get the flow chart and you get information. So Hope this was helpful for you guys. Again, we're going to be doing another uh, Soul Piano System uh, podcast next week, and then the week after that will be the release of the system. All right? So good luck with this, guys. Try it on some tunes. Have fun with it. And as always, happy practicing.